The main stories at 7 on this Thursday. Flash flood watch remains in effect as frontal trough drenches the Trinidad state. Schools shuttered and several other activities disrupted by the inclement weather. Residents react. Government days away from purchasing first aircraft for LIAT 2020. And a proposal being considered for the construction of a crematorium in Antigua and Barbuda. Those are the main stories at 7. The news in detail starts right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the ABS Evening News on this Thursday. A warm welcome, especially to those joining us on our online platforms. My name is Garfield Burford. Uh, Patrice is off this evening. Let's begin with this developing story. The country has been drenched by persistent rainfall since early this morning as a flash flood watch remains in effect. Schools were shuttered today. The hospital suspended some outpatient services. Some businesses closed early as a frontal trough influenced weather conditions across the Twin Island state. The National Office of Disaster Services, NODS, told ABS News this afternoon there had been no reports of damage, through, though some minor dam uh, or flooding had been reported. Now, for the very latest on the weather, we're joined by meteorologist Leonard Josiah this evening. Uh, good evening, Leonard. Thank you so much for joining us. So, first off, how much longer will these conditions Persist. Well, good evening to you, Garfield. Good evening to you, Antigua and Barbuda. Definitely, we had some drenching that took place across our Twin Island state today. And the shot that you're seeing to me, seeing, seeing at the back of me, is just an epic view to show you when two air masses meet, what can, what can really happen. So to you, Garfield, in terms of what we can expect going on into tonight, we are likely to see more cloudy skies and some light rain continuing, but the clouds are forecast to move on towards the east. So in in terms of tomorrow's weather, we're looking at brighter conditions for tomorrow, albeit by, by, by tomorrow morning, that we'll see, still see some more cloudy skies, but the chances of showers will become less. But in terms of what really took place, I know that you are intrigued to hear about that, but this shot I'm going to be explaining to you as we go on into tonight's weather report. But, but for just to answer your question, we are looking at mostly evening showers tonight with the tapering off of the weather conditions overnight, beginning overnight night, giving us some brighter conditions during the course of the day tomorrow. Garfield? Indeed. Uh, thank you so much for that. Now, what has been the estimate, uh, Leonard, about the amount of rainfall so far? Because we had uh, varying estimates leading into uh, this uh, frontal trough affecting the island. We heard that some estimates were saying, saying one to three uh, inches, some estimates were saying two to four. What has happened so far? Okay, um, a great question. We were looking at generally one to two, uh, one to four inches of rainfall across our Twin Island state, and this picture will actually say to you what what we actually received as of 5 p.m. this afternoon. 20-hour forecast, and in inches, we're looking at VC Bird International Airport, 3.08. The most that we have seen is Orange Valley, 4.46, which is just about four and a half inches of rain, but we registered really between one and four and a half inches. So the forecast held straight and held really good. Uh, in terms of the flash flood watch, that has since expired. But the rainfall, the, uh, the amount of rainfall that we're expecting overnight is not going to be in this particularly. Uh, we're not going to be forecasting significant rainfall in the context of what we are now seeing right here, albeit uh, that we will still see some evening showers going forward. Gar uh, Garfield? All right, just to be clear, you mentioning that uh, for the rest of the night, we're expecting these conditions, correct? Yeah, the mostly cloudy skies will continue because of the clouds are still out there and the moisture and the enhancement feature is still around. But during the next 12 hours or so, it will decouple and with that will, will, uh, will, begin, will commence the weakening trend. But by and large, what you saw today, if you're thinking about waking up tomorrow, wondering whether or not there's a flash flood watch in place or warning that has since expired, we can still look for some overnight showers, albeit that we are likely to see uh, that mostly sunny skies or let's say gradually improving conditions will return over the state beginning tomorrow morning. Mm, all right, uh, Orange Valley there, just over uh, four inches, essentially, so that's uh, the, the highest uh, so far. Uh, in terms of Barbuda, uh, what are we looking at? In did they have the same amount? 
Well, the last figure that I saw was at about, just about 5 p.m. this afternoon, which is just uh, just under an inch of rainfall. And uh, that that I'm, I'm you know I'm sometimes questioning how our rainfall can be so sparse around uh, Barbuda sometimes. But for us here in Antigua, yeah, we registered a little bit more than what Barbuda saw. Take a look at the satellite photograph. I will be explaining why this is so in our coming weather forecast. So you certainly want to stick around for that. We look forward to the geographer lesson with the uh, warm and uh, cold uh, fronts uh, essentially meeting. Really appreciate it. Thank you so Definitely. much, Leonard. Really appreciate it. Great stuff. Leonard Josiah joining us at the top of our broadcast here to talk about uh, the very latest on the frontal trough. More on this because our news team crisscrossed rain-drenched streets today where we witnessed some overflowing drains, but thankfully no major flooding. We also gauged reactions of some residents we came across. Our Terry Andrew, uh, he traversed the southern side of the island. I'll get back to Terry in a very short while. Meanwhile, there was more of the same as another of our roving teams traveled through other sections of the island around mid-afternoon. The motorists cautiously navigated waterlogged streets as some gutters and drains overflowed under heavily overcast skies. We also traversed through some areas which are traditionally prone to flooding, including Grace Farm and Hatton, but thankfully uh, there was no major uh, challenge and no major worry for residents there. Well, the relentless downpour of showers has also affected operations of the High Court of Justice. The High Court used the notice today to announce a rescheduling of the reporting of jurors. It says jurors who were scheduled to report today should instead present themselves on Monday, February 12, at 9 in the morning. Jurors are urged to take note of this change and plan their attendance accordingly. We'll get back to, of course, Terry in a very short while in relation to the conditions that he experienced on the southern side of the island. Of course, he also gauged reactions from residents, one of whom indicated to Terry Andrew today that he wasn't quite understanding why uh, there was essentially such a disruption of services across the country uh, given those, con those conditions. You'll want to hear from him a bit later on. In the meantime, let's turn to this developing story in other news because Chief of Staff from the Prime Minister's Office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, says the government is about a week away from acquiring Liat's, Liat 2020's first aircraft. It is one of three planes from the now liquidated Liat 1974 Limited that the government is negotiating to purchase from Caribbean Development Bank CDB. The purchase is a vital step towards acquiring the necessary Air Operating Certificate or AOC to begin the airline's operations. Take a listen to what Ambassador Hurst told journalists this morning at the post-cabinet media briefing. Uh, this would allow us, if we are successful, and we have no doubt we will be, will allow us to seek uh, successfully to achieve the AOC, the airliner's uh, uh, um, operating uh, certificate. And uh, we have not yet uh, been able to complete the deal on the purchase, but uh, it, it's very close. This developing story, the government has agreed to the proposal uh, from Dr. Sir Joseph Joy John to purchase the cancer center, which has been closed since last April. However, the confirmation in writing will be finalized at a later date. Chief of Staff from the Prime Minister's Office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, provided an update during this morning's post-cabinet media briefing. It represents a group of people who have the resources that are necessary uh, to make uh, the cancer center work. What they have promised uh, to do is to fix those machines that can be fixed. And the ones that can't be fixed, they'll throw them out and they'll buy new ones. It won't be at the cost uh, of the, and or won't be, uh, it won't cost the Antigua and Barbuda people a, a penny. And uh, we will become um, a, a shareholder uh, in uh, their operation. Now, Ambassador Hurst also telling uh, the journalists this morning the new technology the team will be using to treat cancer is expected to boost medical tourism across the nation. Dr. John's team proposes to treat nationals and residents of Antigua and Barbuda at a substantially reduced cost compared to international clients. They also commit to repairing the center's existing machines for those opting for traditional cancer treatments. Uh, of course, we'll keep across the story and keep you updated. Now, the government is contemplating a proposal that could see the country's first crematorium established in Antigua and Barbuda, with limited land space set to prove a continuing challenge for traditional burials in future. This new facility promises a practical alternative to interment. Our story this evening from Jamie J. Roche.
As Antiguan Barbuda grapples with its limited burial space challenge, three Canadian investors with Antiguan and Barbudan roots propose a $3.5 million solution instead of the Arch Crematorium. They're interested in uh, using their own money, $3,500,000, to create a crematorium, um, a garden, a nice place where uh, the, uh, uh, the urns uh, can be kept, uh, and uh, to also build something the equivalent of a chapel. Chief of Staff and the Prime Minister's Office Ambassador Lionel Hurst says the cremation alternative aligns with the needs of small island nations like Antigua and Barbuda. He adds investors should have the answers by next week. If they wish to go forward, I think that um, they will get the support of the government of Antigua and Barbuda. Ambassador Hurst says local funeral homes have previously expressed interest in such a facility, and even the government had plans before the COVID crisis redirected necessary funds. Now, if this new proposal passes, it could mark a transformative moment for many Antiguan and Barbudan families, providing a new way to immortalize their loved ones, at least in the ashes. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. Thanks so much, Jamie Lau. Let's return to the, of course, very wet conditions across the country today because our news team crisscrossed rain-drenched streets today where we witnessed some overflowing drains, but thankfully no major flooding. We also gauged reactions of some residents we came across. Our Terry Andrew was on the southern side of the island today. Take a look. Water gushed from an overflowing pond in the Jennings community. The persistent rainfall over several hours created similar scenes all across the country. Over in the West Palm Beach area where residents are fearful in times of persistent rainfall, there was minor flooding. Schools were closed for the day and some businesses also closed their doors early. Some are of the opinion we need a mentality change on island where rainfall is concerned. Yeah, you cannot stop the rain. The rain is, um, is an art of nature. And um, I mean, but the, the way we take it that um, um, when you have this rain like this, everywhere has to lock down. That's where I have a problem because you can, you can walk with an element of the rain. Uh, you know, you can walk with an element of the rain. And I mean, it's not too much. And so I think that um, at least we should have been up today because it's a lot of cost for, um, you know, people who are not going to work today who get paid. It's a lot of cost to the economy. Um, you know, the school was locked down. The students will miss their classes. The teachers will miss uh, their lectures. And um, most of the shops are closed and everywhere, you know. I think that um, we, we... Others we spoke with are just happy for the showers of blessing. The rain is a blessing, of course, uh -huh. right? But at the same time, we should just embrace it. Right? And know that whatever God is doing, we know he has our best welfare. Be very good for the island. Well, we need seasoning pepper, we need lettuce, we need tomato, sweet potato, and this rain will make us get what we want. So we need that rain. Traffic crashes were recorded throughout the day as a result of wet roads. Meanwhile, though the search and rescue team was on alert, ABS News confirms they were not called into action. Terry Andrew, ABS News. Terry, thanks. Now, as the country moves closer to hosting the fourth conference of small island developing states in May of this year, the government has announced that members of the security forces will receive specialized security detail training to protect heads of state and government attending that conference. According to Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister's Office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, the United States will fund the training as part of its package of assistance to Antigua and Barbuda to ensure a successful conference. Uh, the U.S. government has indicated its uh, determination to participate and to assist us uh, by training uh, security officials who will be assigned heads of government and heads of state uh, who will be visiting Antigua and Barbuda for this SITS conference. So some additional training for our police and uh, military and uh, uh, ONDCP officials. The Chief of Staff says the training will take place in Barbados ahead of that conference, which take, takes place between the 27th and the 30th of May at the American University of Antigua, AUA. 
Government says it is working to fix the dust nuisance affecting the Bendel's Primary School. Chief of Staff from the Prime Minister's Office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, provided that update after the school ended prematurely on Monday due to the high volume of dust from the nearby quarry. He also reveals the efforts of the Ministry of Works to secure new anti-dust technology were placed on hold because of a reallocation of funds. Monies had been consumed uh, by uh, other needs uh, of um, several departments within government. So when the replenishment of the resources takes place, uh, then we will uh, apply that technology. More news from this morning's post-cabinet media briefing because the government says it is seeking debt forgiveness for a loan from the QAT Fund for Development. Ambassador Hurst says the funds were used for a project at the VC Bird International Airport. He also outlines the current situation. Our ambassador to Kuwait has made it clear that he has tried for forgiveness of, of, of the debt, or what's left of it, and also uh, to secure some, some funding, some grant funding from the Kuwaiti Fund for Development. Well, there is another perspective this evening regarding ways to improve outcomes in the key subject area of mathematics. Acting Education Officer for Mathematics, Shoya Brown-Hurst, says improved performance in literacy could have the added benefit of making students more proficient in math. Alicia Humphreys has been tracking this story. Brown-Hurst tells ABS News some students struggle with basic arithmetic. What we do find is that some of our students struggle once we begin to delve into concepts like multiplication and division. So they are learning of numbers, not so much a problem, completing procedures like addition and subtraction, very, that's quite okay. The education officer says this problem is sometimes not about numbers, but about comprehension. If students struggle with their literacy, they have a harder time doing multiplication and division. Because as I said, there's a language component that comes into multiplication and division that if they're unable to process through that, then it's highly unlikely that they'll be able to now navigate the processes with the number. So for instance, um, in multiplication, you're using terms like times and as many as and so on. But until you can interpret what that means, then you can't carry out the, the procedure. She says as teachers work to strengthen student skills at school, parents can assist them from the home. We really crave parental support because that makes the world of a difference if what is happening in the classroom is strengthened by parents at home with their children. So we really can't divorce the two. Studies have shown us that once parents are more involved in their students, their children's learning, they tend to perform better. Alicia Humphreys, ABS News. Alicia, thanks. Let's stay in schools because the Jennings Secondary was the latest stop in an ongoing initiative to educate students about the hospitality industry. It's being spearheaded by the Antigua Barbuda Hotels and Tourism Association, the ABHTA, and the Tourism Ministry. The school's tourism awareness program has been active in both government and private primary schools for approximately 25 years. Dedicated hospitality professionals and members of the ABHTA volunteer, uh, volunteer their time uh, during the uh, tours to share valuable experiences and expertise with students. Tourism Minister Honorable Charles Fernandez highlighted in a media release that the primary reason for visiting schools is to sensitize students about their role in the tourism product as it is the country's main industry. The primary school partnership program began in the first term with visits already conducted in 16 schools. Well, Antigua State College's School of Midwifery program has been, re, uh, has been relocated to the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus. More on this because a media release reveals midwifery trainings uh, faced a three-year hiatus to facilitate this transition. It resumed on January 22 this year under the leadership of former head of the Antigua State College's School of Nursing and Midwifery, Laurelyn Williams. New features include the program exp uh, or extending from 15 to 18 months a three-year bond mandated for, for nurses and licensure examinations uh, required for midwifery practice. Eleven nurses from various healthcare sectors such as the Celeste Bird Medical Center, the Fines Institute, the Clareview Psychiatric Hospital and Community Nursing Services are currently enrolled in the program. 
The Ministry of Health collaborated with the United Nations Population Fund to review and update the midwifery curriculum, aligning it with recommendations of the International Con uh, Confederation of Midwives, which sets standards for midwifery education and practice. We're tracking these developing stories, of course, on air and online. We do appreciate your company. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to more national developments, including this one, the 40th series of the State Insurance Company Limited National Spellbound Championship. Well, it begins next week. We'll have a preview. Do stay with us, please, on air and online here on ABS. Tigas News Authority. Stay with us. to us like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything your home and the security of your daughter's things and the car that you've had for too long but after all these years you just can't let go at magico we're about much more than just insurance we're about the big things and the small things that mean everything we wish to inform you that despite the recent increase in ABSD, Shell Stores Gibson Towns Wares will be absorbing this cost until February 29, 2024. Our commitment to providing you with the best prices will always remain unchanged. Please note that while our receipt after checkout reflects the 17% ABSD, our retail prices will remain untouched during this period. Thank you for your continued support. And take a spare Family store, always low, low prices. The Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank announces replacement card collection for former Scotiabank customers who received debit and credit cards during the integration process, and legacy ECAB clients who received renewal credit cards expiring between January and March 2025. Customers with last names beginning K and L should collect their replacement cards this week at the High Street branch. Commercial and small business customers, Coolidge. Customers are reminded to bring their existing card and a valid ID. Your daily reward from the Quartz Ready Cash Money Tree. Every customer is a winner with every loan of $3,000 or more from Quartz Ready Cash. Plus, you get to enter to win a weekend for two at Sandals. No deposit, no collateral needed. All you need is your ID, proof of address, pay slip, job letter, and two references. Visit your nearest Quartz or Ready Cash location today or apply online at www.quartz.com. Get more. More for 2024 with Quartz Ready Cash. We are ready when you are. Conditions apply. Seventh Heaven. Three floors of a wonderful shopping experience. Feel the warmth of our jazz floor. You'll find everything dressy and classy for children too. Enjoy everyday sweet savings on our candy casual floor. Jeans, tops, work attire, and more. Getting married on a budget? Fairy tale weddings at Seventh Heaven has bridal gowns, men's suits, and accessories. Special discounts for platinum members, senior citizens, and high school students. Follow us on social media. Seventh Heaven, South Street. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us here in tune with the ABS Evening News on air and online. More national news now on the 40th series of the State Insurance Company Limited National, uh, the National Spellbound Championship Series begins next Monday at the Maria Holder Early Childhood and Resource Center in Buckley's. With our preview, here is Myrtle Bruno Hodge. 16 primary schools have advanced to the national round of the competition following their performance in several zonal spellbound encounters. During the opening ceremony of the 2024 series earlier this week, Education Officer for the Education Broadcasting Unit, Alicia Knowles, outlined the importance of the competition. The National Spellbound Championship not only celebrates the exceptional abilities of our spellers, but it also embodies the spirit of competition, camaraderie, and intellectual pursuit. It is a testament to the importance of a language as a tool for communication, expression, 
and understanding in our diverse and interconnected world. Meanwhile, Assistant Marketing and Public Relations Manager at State Insurance Company Limited, Donna Lynn Beza, explained the positive influence that Spellbound has had on past participants. We know for sure that it has helped to weave the fabric of our society currently because there are many persons out there today who have passed through Spellbound as spellers, champions or, you know, whatever, but they were part of Spellbound. Education officer for Zone 1, Ralston Nikio, who declared the series open, shared some words of encouragement with the new participants. It's not just about spelling. It's about the beauty of our language and the thrill of the competition. You're ready for the competition, right? No? Are you ready for the competition? Who wants to win? Tell me which one of you would like to win. Oh, the cops cross? The Earlings Primary School are the, the defending champions. Myrtle Bruno Hodge for ABS News. Myrtle, thanks. And of course, we look forward to all the competition indeed. One lobby group is pushing for more to be done to assist the disabled at Potter's Primary School. Now, though the school opened the 2023-2024 academic year with a new ramp, Good Humans 268 Inc. wants a bathroom equipped to meet the needs of individuals with disabilities. And we did have conversation with the Ministry of Education and Board of Education. They promised and they did come through with their promise with putting a ramp to her classroom. However, getting a accessible bathroom is costing between forty to fifty thousand dollars because the bathroom you have to build a ramp to the bathroom the bathroom itself has to be retrofitted that a wheelchair can maneuver into it well the thrust to make potter's primary accessible is aimed at facilitating a fourth grader who has attended the school since kindergarten Francis explains the student cannot access uh, or make use of the bathroom on her own. The Good Humans president says an accessible bathroom would help the student with greater independence. Funding is our limitation, and this is why our plea is for people to make a donation. Selfridge Insurance is on board. Francis also says Potter's primary is just the beginning. The idea is that the government has primary schools in four zones, and we're hoping that we have a future where one primary school in each zone is accessible. That means students within that zone, they will be able to go to that primary school and then we will eventually get to the place where we have at least three of our secondary schools being accessible. Because again, students should be able to learn in an, an environment that is conducive. All right, that's Dorothy Kessler over the national developments. Of course, when the weather is the news, trust ABS as your weather headquarters. Lena Josiah has been, of course, at the top of our newscast to provide the very latest on that frontal trough, which has been affecting the country since early this morning. Leonard is back with a full weather report and forecast. It did promise a geography lesson. Over to you again, Leonard. Going to tell you, Garfield, definitely. But so depending on where you were today, you would have received more or less. Orange Valley came in for the leader, as we could have seen, 4.46 inches of rain was received in the southern area at the VC Bird International Airport. In yellow, 3.08, some places got a little less, but we ranged between 1 and 4.5 inches, keeping in target with our forecast. Why it happened, we'll discuss that more about that when we return. Stay with us. The weather report is brought to you by Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection. Just when you thought the joy was over, Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection extends the happiness into the new year. Purchase any roll shutters and get 15% off. Order accordion shutters today and get 20% off. And as part of our all price guarantee, bring in any competing quotation and not only will we match it, we'll beat it with a better product at a better price. Visit us today or contact us at 560-4532 or visit our website at shuttersinparadise.com. Thanks a lot for joining us. Now let's take a look at what really transpired across our Twin Island State today. When we speak about cold front, we speak a lot about what we call the density of the air mass. So you're seeing all this line right here. This is the line that has most of the clouds associated with the cold front. The cold front is a mark between warmer atmospheric conditions 
on the southeast and cooler atmospheric conditions to the north. Now, these particular cool conditions traverse the Atlantic Ocean to the west across from the, Atla uh, from, uh, from the United States uh, territory, sweeping straight across, and now it is manifesting itself as a cold front. With these warm conditions that we are experiencing or we had experiencing, uh, this particular line, when we have the moisture content of the atmosphere and we have this cool and warm variance across it, the line marks the, uh, the line marks the area. But what makes it more intriguing is the fact that when we're talking about in the upper levels of the atmosphere, all of this is being supported by an upper level trough. This afternoon, we got a clear display of what the cold front did to us because many of you would have witnessed by the time this cool air reached Antigua and Barbuda, we received many calls that the temperature dipped down to 19 degrees Celsius, 66 degrees Fahrenheit during the course of the warmest time of the afternoon, just about 3 p.m. this afternoon. So if you felt the coolness of the atmosphere, it's because the axis of the front moved on towards the east and some of these cooler conditions made its way into the Eastern Caribbean. That is what we call the impacts of a cold front. So in terms of our forecast for tomorrow, this particular feature is forecast to move on towards the east. Most of these clouds by tomorrow morning will be pushed significantly to turn to the east and we should be seeing uh, gradually improving weather conditions. The moisture content of the atmosphere will fall. So as it moves on towards us tonight, where well, we are forecasting going on into the evening hours that you will continue to see mostly cloudy to overcast skies, light rain until midnight, and as we go on, on over midnight, then the chances of showers will become less and less. By tomorrow morning, we will see better conditions. So here goes your forecast for tonight. Mostly cloudy skies for tonight, a very high chance, 100% chance if you see continuing light to moderate rain. Take a look at your overnight lows, nice and cool and bundled up at 18 degrees C, just about 64 degrees Celsius, winds out of the northeast at 7 miles per hour. You're going to be waking up tomorrow morning for morning, a cloudy morning sunrise at 6.36. The sun will set at 6 minutes after 6. Then tomorrow morning, we will see that the chances of showers come down to just about 60% on the mostly cloudy skies, but you'll still see a lingering morning shower uh, with your temperatures in the morning hours are just about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, winds out of the northeast at just about 8 miles an hour. By tomorrow afternoon, we are likely to see it warm up just a little bit more and we are, um, and we are suggesting to you by tomorrow afternoon that your maximum temperatures might peak just about 29, if at all because of the coolness of the temperatures, but yes, yet still we will see a moderate chance that you will see a shower in your neck of the woods. The next couple of days go pretty much like this. Taking you into the weekend, the chances of showers will fall, but yet still, the winds will, uh, the winds will become moderate. A moderate chance of a passing shower because of some patches of low-level clouds lingering in our neck of the woods. Take a look at your Saturday, Sunday, and on Monday's forecast, a 40% chance that you will see some passing showers and your temperatures returning at 31 with your overnight lows, nice and manageable at 22. But at the beaches tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon, Noon, we have a high surf advisory in place. Why? Because some swells from that low pressure area will be making its way towards the, uh, uh, towards the shores of Antigua and Barbuda. And with that, winds now to the northeast at 12 miles an hour. Surf, you're going to be seeing uh, waves in the region of five feet. And the next couple of days, as I advance the slide, we will see uh, that the sea conditions will begin to get a little bit more boisterous because of what we call the high surf in our neck of the woods, reaching as high in some areas as nine feet on Saturday and on Sunday, taking you into the weekend, not friendly waters for beach goers at all. So as I leave you, thank you for weathering your weather. In spite of the weather, whether you like it or not, you did a great job. The weather will continue to be nice and manageable going on into tonight. Wake up tomorrow morning and we will see better conditions. Good night to everyone. Garfield. Whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, definitely. Great education there, great education lesson there on uh, geography. Uh, so very, very comprehensive as ever. Uh, thankfully, Leonard, no flooding. Of course, the rain was spaced out over uh, quite a few uh, hours, and it wasn't very, very heavy. No thunderstorms reported? 
Yeah, some thunderstorms were reported early this morning in some places. We did have some thunderstorms when the frontal trough moved on by, but you're so correct. Um, it did not give us uh, so much in the way of flooding, though some places got minor flooding, yeah, but it was not major flooding uh, um, for you to impede your movement, etc. But going on into tonight, some... some Rain still in the atmosphere, but we are going to be looking at the chances coming down beginning overnight tonight. All right, there you go. So now you're fully up to date on the developments, as Leonard says, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. Indeed. That's Great it stuff. for this segment of our newscast, the point at which we say farewell to those joining us on Facebook. We